Uh, my question's for Mr. Swenson. Um, when the EPA first objected to this road project, you wrote that uh, the EPA wasn't considering <laughs> the EPA wasn't considering whether or not this route went through population corridor because there are a number of ways, uh, widening lanes, installing traffic lights, things like that, that could easily accommodate that traffic. Now you're saying the EPA is considering the fact that the current route goes through a population corridor, so that's a change from when you objected to it initially. Um, so I'm wondering why that um, why that change from the EPA saying that you needed to follow the Clean Water Act and look at this and that it going through Marquette didn't matter, and now you're saying that the options that the applicant limited it to with its project purpose are those options that you have to follow yourself. Um, in, in both cases, uh, we would say we need to follow the Clean Water Act. The difference is that the, what you're talking about was a previous proposal by um, a different applicant. It's called Woodland Road. Um, the purpose stated for that was different than the, than the current purpose. So we have to go off. I mean, that's, that's our starting point. What is the purpose of the project? And in, yes, in, I understand. Yeah. I understand that, but what you're saying with this is that Rio Tinto or the road commissioner, however Rio Tinto uses to get the road pushed through, can decide what their project purpose is in order to limit it to the exact geographical area where they want a project. Um, so that really sort of restricts the EPA into what it can consider because it needs to basically consider what the applicant wants you to. Um, well, I think I, I want to make sure we're understanding the question. Uh, are you asking why the original Hall Road is we're deviating from the original Hall Road? No, I'm asking how the process can be so that an applicant can decide where it wants its project, okay. and it can craft its project purpose in order so that it can get its project within the corridor that it wants, and you have to follow that, and not actually consider wetland impacts or anything else. You have to actually limit yourself to where the applicant placed you. Um, I think I'm gonna take that one. And just to remind you that there are two parts um, to looking at this permit decision, and one is looking at whether a project meets the purpose and need, and, and um, we are somewhat constrained by what the applicant wants and how they define their purpose and need, but yet the other component is still, they can have a state of purpose and need, but if the impacts are still significant, result in significant degradation, that's still a basis um, to make, uh, that's what we base our decision on, and can they really offset those significant impacts? So even though we may be constrained a little bit by the project purpose, um, we still are look we still need to meet the goals of the Clean Water Act um, and ensure that there's not significant harm to the aquatic environment. I'm just curious, uh, when we talk about 25 acres, 35 acres, or 15 acres, how many acres of wetlands are shown on that inset there? How many acres of wetlands are in these townships? We're conferring to see if we have that information available. Um, we, we did look at a, a four mile wide corridor paralleling the proposed kind of 595. And the, um, there's, there, were, the, uh, there were over 2,400 acres. I don't have the exact number, but uh, significantly over 2,400 acres of wetlands in that corridor. Um, two questions. One is, um, how old is the wetland inventory map? And two, if it's the agency's position to not permit something that has negative degradation or a negative impact on a project, then you probably won't support as an agency any of the proposals, which would put it in the hands of the Army Corps of Engineers. Is that correct? That is not correct. The purpose of our meeting tonight is to make sure that we get comments so that we have information in order to make our decision. Um, that said, um, Steve, 
Did you have something else you wanted to add to that? Wetland inventory, the general wetland inventory was the late 90s. But of course there was more specific work done by the applicant on this corridor. If the current Tony Road 595 is denied in this hearing, I guess with this permit application, under this application, would you guys be able to approve the Mulligan Plains East or Red Road, Sleepy Hollow, or would that require a new wetland permit and a new public hearing? Yes, the applicant would have to um, apply for whatever um, route they are applying for um, to the state. 